going to call to order this public hearing <coughs> concerning the intent of the Board of Commissioners of the Wheaton Park District to adopt a budget and appropriation ordinance for the period beginning January 1st, 2018 and ending December 31st, 2018. Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Morrill? Here. Commissioner Me? Here. Commissioner Kelly? Here. Commissioner Hodgkinson? Here. Commissioner Fry? Here. Commissioner Fahey? Here. President Viers. Here. Mike, would you uh, summarize this public hearing? Yes, sir. Uh, first, I, I will. It is always staff's recommendation, and it is typically uh, handled this way, where the board will open this public hearing at the October meeting, um, and instead of closing it at the same meeting, allow the public an entire another 30 days uh, to be aware uh, and have an opportunity uh, for public comment. Uh, therefore, the recommendation would be, rather than adjourning this public hearing when we're done, to recess it to the November meeting, um, uh, seek further public input or commissioner uh, comment uh, regarding the budget appropriation ordinance, and then close it at that time as a reminder for our budget uh, uh, preparation schedule. Uh, we would then seek the uh, approval, or excuse me, the adoption of the budget and appropriation ordinance for 2018 at the December board meeting. Uh, also, that would be uh, the meeting at which the 2017 property tax levy would also be adopted. Um, so briefly, uh, ordinance, uh, the ordinance uh, adopting a combined budget and appropriation, uh, appropriating such sums as money as may be deemed necessary to defray all necessary expenses and liabilities for the Wheaton Park District, DuPage County, Illinois, for the fiscal year January 1, 2018, and ending December 31st, 2018, and specifying the objects and purposes for which such appropriations are made and the amounts appropriated for each object and purpose. Um, for our, those in the audience and our friends at home, there is a budgeted amount uh, pr proposed and an appropriated amount proposed. An appropriation amount is, is slightly higher than the budgeted amount, and that allows uh, uh, room for unforeseen circumstances, emergency circumstances, without having to go back and adopt an entire uh, uh, <coughs> new budget. Uh, typically, the park uh, district um, stays uh, within its budgeted items. However, with board approval, uh, we may exceed that budgeted item into the appropriation level, um, which the park district code or state law allows us to do. Um, just uh, for the record, uh, the estimated cash on hand at the beginning of the fiscal year, 18 is estimated to be $19,782,635. Uh, the cash expected to be received during that fiscal year from all sources, that includes property taxes and fees and charges, is $37,892,585. Um, the estimated expenditures contemplated for the fiscal year, and this number will be higher than the estimated revenue figures because we do on an annual basis spend capital dollars from reserves uh, to maintain the park district's infrastructure. So while it is a larger number on the expense area than the revenue area, it is because those are planned drawdowns of fund reserves um, for maintaining the park district's infra infrastructure through capital uh, improvements. So that figure is $42,711,856. Um, the estimated cash expected to be on hand at the end of fiscal 2018 is $14,963,365. And the amount of taxes estimated to be received in 2018 via the 2017 uh, tax levy is $17,882,803, which uh, for your information represents uh, approximately 10% of uh, your property tax bill uh, or 10 cents of every dollar uh, that you pay in property taxes. Typically, a typical homeowner will pay to the park district with the, the other 90 cents going to the remaining uh, units of government via DuPage County uh, Clerk's Office. Um, briefly, the corporate, uh, the corporate budget figure for 2018 is 5965400 just a few more numbers. The recreation fund budget figure is $10,109,707. Our special recreation fund, or that fund that uh, levies taxes for and uh, Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, as well as our membership in the Western DuPage Special Recreation Association, uh, is $825,831. Uh, the property tax levy uh, and budget that uh, supports Cosley Zoo operations, uh, that up figure is $1,411,734. Insurance liability expenses estimated at $616,288, $616,288. Uh, our audit 
Uh, fund uh, is expected to see $35,664. Uh, our FICA fund is 606,333. Our retirement fund uh, for 2018, 813,209. Uh, our debt service fund, 5,087,178. Our health insurance fund, 1.8, uh, 1,816,146. Our capital projects fund, 6,504,611. And our golf fund, Arrowhead, $9,884,693. And finally, our information technologies fund of $485,062. Um, that's enough numbers, but in the interest of the public record and uh, uh, making sure that we comply with state statutes as it relates to uh, full disclosure um, of the park board's intentions uh, to uh, <coughs> and appropriate uh, dollars for the uh, upcoming fiscal year. That's all I have. It would be an appropriate time for board comment or seeking public comment. Is there anybody here from the public who wishes to make comment as regards the uh, intent to adopt the budget and appropriation ordinance? Okay, how about commissioners? Are there any commissioners who'd like to speak? No comments there. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to recess this meeting until our regularly scheduled November meeting. Move to recess. Second. So we have a motion by me, second uh, by Kelly. Uh, all, the, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'll call to meet, I'll call to order now the uh, regularly scheduled October meeting of the Wheaton Park District Board of Commissioners. Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Morrow? Here. Commissioner Mee? Here. Commissioner Kelly? Here. Commissioner Hodgkinson? Here. Commissioner Fry? Here. Commissioner Fahey? Here. President Viers? Uh, here. So we'll start with uh, presentations. I think we have a presentation on uh, Play for All Playground. Rick Napier, uh, who has just joined our uh, Play for All Playground and Garden Foundation uh, as, a, as a board member, uh, uh, has an update for us. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. My name is Rick Napier, and I am the Daytime Community Center Manager. Uh, I am also an autism parent, uh, which is how I became involved with the Play for All Committee and why the Sensory Park Project is especially meaningful to me. Uh, to briefly recap our progress with the sensory park so far, phase one of the park opened in 2015, as you know, and included a playground for two to five-year-olds, a central gathering area, a fragrance garden, a sound garden, as well as the art along the way installations of which two of four are completed to date. Uh, completion and installation of the remaining artwork is projected for 2018. Swings are to be installed this fall or possibly early spring of next year. Phase two of the park includes the accessible treehouse. The Play for All board approved the initial concepts from Hitchcock Design Group in August. Hitchcock Design Group is moving forward with the design. The treehouse design includes expanded boardwalks that gradually elevate to the treehouse structure at a height of 11 feet, as well as various interactive elements and play features. Hitchcock has designed the treehouse itself in phases, each with additional uh, additions uh, should funds become available and uh, fundraising for the project is ongoing. The final design phase is scheduled for completion in January of 2018. The permitting phase will then begin and conclude in early April. Bidding will begin in mid-January and the award date is anticipated for March <coughs> 2018. Construction is projected to commence in mid-April with a targeted final completion date of October 3rd, 2018. And uh, this uh, project schedule was presented by Hitchcock and was current as of October 5th. A treehouse mixer is planned for this October 19th, which is actually tomorrow, uh, at the playground. And the event will start at 4.30 and will be co-hosted by the Lyle and Wheaton Chambers of Commerce. The chambers have invited their members. And we have mailed invitations to our current and prospective partners. Uh, we'll be pre presenting some information about the treehouse, thanking those who've contributed so far and reaching out to those who might be interested. Uh, we will also be announcing the Treehouse Groundbreaking Ceremony, which will take place on May 19th, 2018, which is the May 2018 Play Day. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you for supporting this project. Um, I believe this park serves an important need and will greatly benefit the community and surrounding areas. Um, I'm grateful to be a part of it, and I feel that when all is said and done, uh, this park will serve as a model for other communities. Thanks, Rick. Thank, Thank you, Rick. Questions or comments for Rick? Good job by the foundation. Keep up the good work. 
Thank you, Rick. Appreciate Thank it very you, much. Thanks, Rick. Is anybody here who's signed up for public comments who'd like to address the board? Please state your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> uh, my name is uh, Chris Ewart. Uh, my address is 314 Westwood Drive in Wheaton. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to talk about uh, Graph Park. I know that's been an issue um, here lately. Um, and uh, we, we received a letter from, this, uh, from the district that the school board has a strong direction towards using the existing Jefferson facilities. Um, and that as a result, the park district has uh, concluded discussions about the use of the land there. And I just wanted to say thank you um, and express my gratitude um, for that. And I don't know, you know exactly all of what um, uh, role uh, you played in that, uh, helping the school district get to that decision, but I just want to say thank you for whatever, whatever that was for, for them getting to the point of preserving the park. And I know that there's several others here who wanted to express the same, um, but we don't want to take your time. So maybe if I could just have people raise their hands um, <clears throat> who came for that. Um, we have been and we continue to be fiercely opposed to taking land from the park, and especially uh, when the school district has a fully viable alternative. Um, this is important to us, and we do plan to keep coming to the meetings until it's fully resolved. But I also, in all of this, I want you all to know, um, I want to make sure that the Park District Board knows that we value and we respect the work that you do. Um, as regular users of the park, we benefit from the upkeep and the improvements of the park. We want to reiterate our thanks for the work that the Park District has done in maintaining the park. Uh, it's beautiful. You guys do a great job with that. And if I've learned something over the last month, uh, it's that Graff Park really means a lot to the extended community. Um, Graff isn't just a neighborhood park. It's uh, serving the immediate neighbors. Um, it's really a regional park. It's a park that people run, bike, jog, drive from miles away to enjoy. It's, a, it's especially valuable because of its location, because it's large and because it's quiet. And it provides uh, a needing, needed escape from an otherwise uh, increasingly developed Wheaton. For many of us, this park played a major role in our decisions to live in the area. So those of us that live in the extended area around it are very grateful that people had the forethought to set aside the land as a park back in the 70s. Um, and I believe that the, next, that the same will be true of the next generation as well. Um, cutting it in half and building a school on it would have dramatically changed that. Um, and instead of being a large open park, it would have become crammed in the back of the neighborhood and um, right next to brightly lit football fields um, with noise, pollution, and more traffic from the school. So building on the land would have dramatically cut the value of the park much more so than the number, than just the number of acres it looked like on paper. So because of that, we're very grateful, and we hope that the Park District will continue to act to preserve this important space for the future. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Chris. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Does anybody have a motion ready? <coughs> to approve the consent agenda as presented, items A through H, starting with A, disbursements totaling $1,731,196.25 for the period beginning September 13, 2017, and ending October 10, 2017. Approval of September 20, 2017, public hearing minutes concerning the Wheaton Park District Americans with Disabilities Act Transition Plan. The September 20, 2017 regular meeting minutes, the September 20, 2017 closed session meeting minutes, the October 4, 2017 buildings and grounds subcommittee meeting minutes, the October 4, 2017 finance subcommittee meeting minutes, and the uh, approval to engage the strategic hospitality search for recruitment services for an amount not to exceed $13,000, and finally, the approval of the appointment of Mike Bernard as a delegate to the Illinois Association of Park Districts annual meeting January 20, 2017 at 3.30 p.m. in Chicago, Illinois. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by me and a second by Fry. Does anybody have any comments? Nope. Um, just Mr. quickly, uh, Mike, on the um, strategic hospitality search, that's a one-time um, yeah, it, we're, we're using this search uh, in this instance as, a, as, a, as attempting to uh, research new ways of, of attracting talent for unique positions that the Park District has. 
Um, uh, should we ever, uh, well, depending on the success of the search with this firm, uh, should, uh, I can promise you that should we want to use such a firm again, I would bring it back to the board and with a, a different set of explanations depending on the uniqueness of the position. So short answer is we're looking at this one time, but I won't promise you that we, we may not, we won't be back again someday depending if we have a, a job that's uniquely difficult to fill. Um, uh, our standard will continue to be we we'll use our own recruitment uh, methods through our own HR department and, and vet employees as we have been uh, all along. Other comments? Okay, uh, motion by me, second by Fry. Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Me? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hodgkinson? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. President Viers? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to unfinished business. Item one is the Arrowhead residence. Does somebody have a motion? Oh, President Viers, before we get to that, uh, out of respect for our Graf Park group, don't feel bashful about leaving if you don't want to sit through the rest of this meeting. But if you wish to say, you're welcome. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you got to stay. You know, we want to thank <laughs> we, we want to thank them too because yeah. they they have really expressed a lot of support for this park. Thank so you. So we appreciate it very much. It. Thanks. And by the way, it was real helpful to get all of your comments, you know, uh, it was helpful to us and the school district. So thank Thanks thank for coming. All right, so item one, uh, Arrowhead Residence. Does somebody have a motion ready? Move to approve Arrowhead Residence review and possible action low bid for complete uh, demolition via contract with KLF Enterprises in the amount of $25,415. Second. All right, so we have a motion by Fahey, a second by Hodgkinson. Uh, comments? Then I'll start. Um, so it, it would appear that what we're uh, approving here is the uh, demolition um, of the home, although I don't see the um, alternative, which is demolition of a home and not the rest of it. Am I correct in that regard? There is an alternate bid that's on the, the bid sheet there um, with Fox excavating for $32,000, which would leave the garage, bathroom, and porch intact, and that would also... Keep the utility connection. Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking at the wording of the um, the motion and how it's presented on their agenda. So basically, what we're doing is we're taking a vote to demolish the residence. Is that correct? Yes. At the Part of it or all of it? That's okay. what that motion is. Yes. All um, of it, I think. The recommendation was left to us to decide tonight. One what way or the other. So the way it's written I, I, I on there, we the have to decide whether we want it all. Or not, so I, I crafted the motion, if I may, based on the, the results of the subcommittee meeting uh, in September at which the board was polled and the majority uh, you know, felt strongly about this direction. However, it's, it, I'm your head recommender. I don't vote. If, you want, if somebody wants a different motion, by all means, make it. I'd like your recommendation. My recommendation? Yes. My recommendation has been and remains... Uh, Spend the spend the fifty thousand dollars to repair the house, um, and I put this in writing to the board several times. Um, we're getting it out on the record, I suppose. Um, to spend the fifty thousand dollar estimate to repair the house, um, and uh, button it up, and wait for the next opportunity for an appropriate uh, Arrowhead Golf uh, Course employee uh, to occupy it uh, using uh, a salary deduction or an annual rent. Um, when the day comes that an appropriate uh, employee is found, and we do have attrition occurring within the next two to four years uh, of golf course employees um, who would be eligible to serve as caretakers of that, of that site, as well as uh, provide an opportunity for the park district to uh, employ somebody at a lesser uh, direct cost, as you did with me for eight and a half years when I lived in that facility. Uh, the fifty thousand dollars contemplated would be made up. Would be made up, I reckon, in you know, in a matter of of two to three years of charging somebody two thousand dollars a month uh, rent in the form of a payroll deduction or flat out rent. That remains my recommendation because I don't believe that an asset of this type should be. Uh, I guess my 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 feeling is it can benefit the future of the park district, the future of the golf course, and once it's gone, it's gone. You can't unring the bell. That my, that's my recommendation. Respectfully, 
knowing that at the last subcommittee meeting, the majority of the board uh, disagrees with me. John? I'll continue. Uh, you know, I'm in support of that recommendation, and I'm in opposition of the uh, recommendation, or at least the motion, to demolish the residence. Um, it was reported that back in 2005, we spent about $380,000 in, in uh, Park District monies to renovate that home. Um, that's not that long ago. Um, I think it would be uh, irresponsible of the board to simply disregard that expenditure for that home, uh, basically throw that money away. That's a lot of money, um, a lot of taxpayer dollars, if you will, um, to renovate that home. Um, Mike uh, has recommended at least one um, use of that home. I think there's possibly another, but to me, um, the way to go right now is to spend that $50,000 and bring it up to a habitable um, piece of property for us since it already exists. Um, there may be other uses for that property if, if we don't, um, let's say, rent it out. And I do think that if we rented it out, we could probably make up that $50,000 in two to three years through the rental. Um, but if, if it's not a rental, I do think that it possibly could be used for some other programming or possibly, you know, special event rentals. But, you know, I'm not going to support, you know, a, a disregard of, of the $380,000 that we spent uh, not that long ago, um, you know, to renovate that home. John. Yeah, it, that's where I've been all along, and I've said that, so I'm going on record as saying I don't support tearing down an asset that's worth that kind of money. I'm not, I, I'm not opposed to renting it, like Terry said. I'm not opposed to selling it. Um, I know there's people who don't want to sell part of our property, but tearing it down is the last thing I'm going to vote for. Hey, do you have any comments? I'd have to uh, give you a point. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I, I have been in favor of tearing it down from the beginning, and I remain in favor of tearing it down. I think we have made up some of that 380000 or whatever it was that was spent in renovating that uh, house uh, through Mike's eight and a half years living there and the salary that, that we charged off on that house at, what, 30000 a, 36, a year? $36,000 a year. 36000 a year times eight. Is, <clears throat> you're getting close to actually what we had put into it to um, renovate it to, to begin with. We didn't, but was the district spent on it. Uh, I, I, and, and maybe it's hypocritical because I benefited for 25 years living in a park district house. Uh, and and I, I see the value that it did present. It, it kept, I hope, a good employee around for a long time. Uh, and I, I see that as a value with the house here at Arrowhead, but I think it's time to get out of the housing business, and, and I don't want the liability of a house sitting out there vacant while we're waiting for somebody to come along that maybe wants to rent, and I'm totally against selling it. Thanks, Ray. Jane, do you have any comments? Anything else? No, I'm also in favor of demolishing it because of the aforementioned reasons that Ray just gave. I believe that we have earned a lot of that money back that was sunk into the house back in 2005. But I also <coughs> believe, too, that we've spent uh, over a year talking about what the house could be used. We've come up with the staff's ideas. I mean, I think we had outdoor learning laboratory talked about. We had bird sanctuary. We talked about revenue facilities for the banquet. You know, we've talked about a number of different uses for this house. And nothing that we could come up that was truly financially viable in terms of wasn't it going to cost us more to relocate things out to this house. So I feel like we did extensively look at how this house should be used. And I also feel like the time uh, th that this was a bygone time when park districts would provide housing for employees. And I do not think that it is a uh, customary practice that people in our community would support in terms of us making housing available, particularly <coughs> since we don't, you know, the school district doesn't make housing available, the city doesn't make housing available, why would the park district be making housing available? And lastly, I'll just say, we've also looked at the fact that this house is at the back of the property, and logistically, it makes it more difficult to keep it up. It's in a forest setting, which 
also means that it's more susceptible to developing mold, which is what the house is filled with now. And so I in favor demolishing it. Uh, I uh, have to agree with Ray and Jane on demolishing it. Um, I think the value of the property that it sits on, we can repurpose that property to better use for the park district. So I'm in favor of demolishing. Um, so I am in favor of demolishing the property. Um, for those reasons stated by Ray and Jane and Bob, um, relatively new to this uh, particular, um, just to the board. So, um, but I, I just I I think the uh, liability and the uh, just the upkeep of that house um, far exceeds the um, uh, fifty thousand dollars. So, um, I'm in favor of uh, demolishing it. Yeah, and I am as well in favor of demolishing. I just don't think it's an asset. Uh, it's an asset if we could sell it without uh, disrupting the operations of the golf course, but staff informs me that that would be disruptive to sell that parcel off to a private party. It would be disruptive to have somebody back there who wasn't uh, a, an employee, uh, who was just uh, an outside person. Uh, you know, uh, According to staff's recommendation, that would be disruptive as well. Um, so if in order to be an asset, it would have to be easily accessible. It would be something that we could sell off with any disruption to our operations. To me, it's more of a liability than anything else. And it's uh, witnessed by the fact that we had um, flooding in there and then uh, subsequently mold and would cost more than twice this amount just to get it habitable again. So I uh, like, uh, like the last few who spoke, I'm in favor of de demolition as well. Um, so we have a motion by Fahey, a second by Hodgkinson. Mike, would you call the roll? <clears throat> Commissioner Kelly? No. Commissioner Hodgkinson? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Me? No. Hey, one more. Oh, President Vyers, my apologies. <laughs> yes. All right, we'll move on to unfinished business. Item number two uh, approval of an easement with the Wheaton Sanitary District. Does somebody have a motion ready? I move to request the approval of an easement agreement with the Wheaton Sanitary District and the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County for the construction and maintenance of a sanitary interceptor sewer in the Lincoln Marsh Forest Preserve. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Fry, second by Fahey. Is there any discussion on this? And Mike, this is just a part of an ongoing project that the Wheaton Sanitary District is... Yes, the Wheaton Sanitary District has uh, been working diligently to... Uh, gosh, I think it might be in the vicinity of 100, uh, securing 100 easements from both public and private uh, uh, landowners in the area in order to, to complete their interceptor or project. Um, uh, Rob, does this conclude our work on easements with the sanitary district, or do we have a few left? Northside Park is remaining. Okay. We do have, we do have another action uh, contemplated. I don't. Rob, and just for everybody at home, we, we believe the sanitary district, once they secure their uh, all of the easements that they require uh, uh, to ensure that everybody's toilet flushes appropriately. They'll begin working in 2018, or we're not sure if it will even begin in 18, might begin in 19. I couldn't tell you at this yeah, point. It's, They're it's, out, it's out there a ways, but they're, they're getting their ducks in a row. Okay, so we have a motion by Fry and a second by Fahey. Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Hodgkinson? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Me? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. President Vyers? Yes. Mixing it up a little bit today. You know, I, in, in reading my board general practices manual, as we updated it further on in the agenda here, I, it, 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 I was reminded that I'm supposed to rotate the vote order. So I'm, I'm good. So work with me as I, as I struggle to get it correct. <laughs> wow. It's, it's much easier to start with Ray and finish with you every time. So it's kind of a brain. Yeah, no, bet. no, that's the best practices. That's good. Uh, item number three, unfinished business, periodic review of uh, executive director job description. Does somebody have a motion ready? I, I'll move to approve the job description of the executive director of the Wheaton Park District as presented to the Board of Commissioners on October 18th, 2017. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Morrill, second by Fahey. Is there any discussion on this? And Mike, this is just an update, and it's, again, required for our statewide agency accreditation program. Yes, sir. Thank you. Comment? Mike, would you call the roll? Just, uh, voice vote. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. <coughs> Item four, periodic review of the general practices manual of the uh, Park Board of Commissioners. So move, to motion ready. move to approve the update of the general practices manual of the Board of Park Commissioners. Second. So we have a motion by me and a second by Hodgkinson. Any discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Item number five, approval of orientation program uh, for newly elected commissioners. Uh, somebody have a motion ready? Move, Move to, to approve of the orientation program um, outlined for newly elected commissioners of the Wheaton Park District required, required for statewide agency accreditation program. Second. Second by Morrill. So mo a motion by Fahey, second by Morrill. Any Fry, discussion? Fry. Okay. Fry, second on that? Mm -hmm. I got cold, I can barely yeah. hear. What? <laughs> so a motion by Fahey, second by Fry. Any discussion? Kevin, I'd this? just like to, yeah, and I'd like to say uh, thank you to Mike, who spent some time with me um, and uh, proactively. We're not, we're not and done. Through. <laughs> well, I know, we're checking them off, and I start with Mary. Um, uh, and, uh, but thank you. You're for welcome, your time. sir. Yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Item six review and approval of the long range capital expense schedule. Do we have a motion ready? I move for the approval of an orientation program outline for, no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. I move for the review and approval of the long range capital expenses scheduled for the Wheaton Park District 2019 through 2032 required for statewide agency accreditation program. Second. Okay, motion by Fry, second by Hodgkinson. Any discussion? Right. Could we, should we maybe add uh, subject to change during the district's annual capital projects meeting? Because this will change. As we review it, look at it. We could, yeah. I think if you want to amend your motion that way, the the annual budget appropriation ordinance supersedes your approval of a general twenty year schedule. But it's certainly belt and suspenders to amend the motion that way. I just don't want people to think that just because we approve this now that it's approved and it is going to be subject to change. And then it's set in stone. Because it's not right. For instance, if there's a vehicle on a replacement schedule five years out in our fleet. You know, director is able to squeeze three more years out of it. By all means, we'll squeeze three more years out of it. Uh, so, yeah, it is subject to change. Bob, are you open to amending your uh, motion to include subject to change? Yes, absolutely. And Jane? I'm not sure. No, I, I think will. <laughs> all right, any other comments? Uh, thank you, Ray, for bringing thank that you. up. <laughs> more comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Okay, item seven on finished business, periodic review of uh, salary ranges. Does somebody have a motion ready? Move to approve periodic review and update of salary ranges for full-time employees of the Wheaton Park District required for statewide agency accreditation program. Second. Is that the document that we have here? Uh, yes, uh, the, there was a, a report emailed to you on Monday, um, and then this is the short version, uh, the existing ranges, the updated ranges, and some explanations on how the numbers were arrived at, and then also an indication of the definitions of each salary level and the number of employees on the back that reside in, within each level. So, yes. Any other comments or questions? We have a motion by Fahey, second by Fry. No. No, who was that? Jane. It was Ch Jane? Sounded like Bob to me. I gotta go home and go to bed if I <laughs> few more few more votes and we can get you out. <laughs> that was bad. All right. Motion by Fahey, second by Hodgkinson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. On to new business. Uh, resolution twenty seventeen dash ten. Does somebody have a motion? Move to approve. Resolution 2017-10, authorizing the estimate of the annual aggregate levy in compliance with the Truth in Taxation Law. Second. So me and Morrill. <laughs> uh, any discussion? And we'll put that number, that resolution number, on the resolution itself, correct? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Or else? Shall be done. <laughs> All right, motion by me, second by Morrill. Uh, does it need to be a roll call? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Me? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hodgkinson? Yes. President Byers? Yes. Okay, uh, item two, uh, approval, change order number four for Ratchie Park Pond. Uh, somebody have a motion ready? Yes, so moved. Second. A motion by Kelly, second by Fahey. This is for a change order not to exceed $4,725. I think we do voice vote on this. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed?
motion carries. <coughs> Change order number one, which is item three. Does somebody have a motion for that? Yeah, I'll move that we approve uh, change order number one on the fall asphalt project for $1,683. Second. Go ahead. Give it to Fahey. It's close. All right, motion by Kelly, second by Fahey. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the fuel delivery, item four. Does somebody have a motion ready? Move to approve the recommendation for fuel delivery for 2018 through 2020 with feast oil in the amount of uh, 14.8 cents per gallon. Second. All right, motion by me, second by Morrill. Any discussion? Good price. I think we have to do the roll on this, right? Uh, yes. Uh, Commissioner <laughs> Fahey. Yes. Commissioner Morrill. Yes. Commissioner Me. Yep. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Hodgkinson. Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Fry. Yes. President Byers. Yes. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. <coughs> Item five, uh, bid results for the Taylor Barn roof replacement. Does somebody have a motion ready? Move to approve bid results and recommendations. Taylor Barn roof replacement with Filato Construction in the amount of $29,500 plus a $5,000 contingency. Second. Second. Motion by Fahey, second by Morrill. Any discussion? I just have a question. Is that normal in a bid, a $5,000 unforeseen repairs fee? Um, Continue. Steve, can you confirm that? I believe that was staff recommendation for... We, we believe that the, this structure has, has got some age on it and some wear on it in other areas. For a replacement on the roof. Right? Yeah, we... Pardon? Okay. It's what? So that's our number that we just want the board to approve, then buildings and ground can approve change orders out of that $5,000. we will always get. If we have to replace any, it was for damaged plywood, right? Uh, yeah, damaged plywood. Yeah. It's not a plywood. <coughs> okay. okay. We, we foresee some additional expenses. Does that answer your question? Yes. No. Okay. All right. So we motion by Faye, second by Morrill. Uh, I think we need to call the roll on this. Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Me? Yep. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hodgkinson? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. President <coughs> Byers? Yes. Item six, uh, clock tower skate park equipment replacement. Somebody have a motion ready? To approve the expenditure in the amount of $120,500, a price secured through the National Joint Purchasing Program. Um, with work to be done by Spone Ranch for the clock tower skate park equipment replacement. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by me, second by, uh, was that Friar Fahey? Me. Fahey. Any discussion? Okay, Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Me. Yep. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Hodgkinson. Yes. Commissioner Fry. Yes. Commissioner Fahey. Yes. Commissioner <coughs> Morrill. Yes. President Viers. Yes. Item seven, uh, the approval of uh, <coughs> netting and batting cages at uh, CIC. Does somebody have a motion? Uh, I'll move that we accept the bid from Draper Huffcore Company in the amount of $24,375 for the batting cage netting at Central Athletics. Second. Motion by Kelly, second by Fry. Any discussion? I believe it's under 25. Oh, yeah, sure. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Item eight, a recommendation to approve a contract uh, with Davis Athletic Company. Does anybody have a motion ready? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Davis Athletic Company bid for wall padding in the batting cage area of the Central Athletic Complex in the amount of $15,381.60. Second. Second. Well, so I'll give it to you. Yeah. All right, motion by uh, Morrill, second by me. Any discussion? Okay, we can take a voice vote on this. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Item nine, uh, community center floor repair. Somebody have a motion ready? Yeah, I'll move that we accept the bid from Handelman Home for the floor repairs at the community center in the amount of $9,204. A second. Motion by Kelly, second by Fahey. Any discussion? Yes. 
I just had a question, Mike. So did the insurance company go get the bids, or did we get the bids and have to submit them? To we, <coughs> we we sought the bids. Okay. And the insurance settlement is exactly the amount of the no. Bid? The insurance settlement is in excess of thirteen thousand dollars. Okay. Which and, I have which I have graciously accepted. And Handelman didn't do. Did they do the original Florida Kiefer? If you recall. So this is from the original flooring installer. Hey, did you have a comment? No, I was just going to say mention that the insurance company is covering this expense. <coughs> yes, entailed some damage from a DJ or something. Using the yes, during the post prom event, uh, one of our independent contractors who provided entertainment uh, inadvertently did some damage to the floor. Okay. okay, so we have a motion by Kelly, second by Fahey. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, ordinance 2017 06. I move for the approval of Ordinance 2017-06, an ordinance approving the disposal and sale of personal property owned by the Wheaton Park District. Second. So a motion by Fry, second by Morrill. Any discussion? Roll what call for this. Yeah, what do we do? <coughs> what happens with all this? We sell it or throw it away. Okay. And is that sale planned? We, we yes, we have, a, we have a, a, a number of, of vehicles through which we sell things depending on the type of product. It's a, typically an auction. Um, um, we, we, for the most part, Rob, I believe we've only been using auction sites at this, at this juncture. Um, if it's not sellable, if it's, you know, if it's garbage, we throw it in the garbage. If we believe we can generate a couple of bucks off of it, we, we will sell it through one of the many approved means that we have. We will attempt to donate things that we you know believe you know what charity may uh, desire but it, typically they <coughs> typically asked, garbage ends up yeah. going in the garbage i ask because i'm interested in some of these bats oh jeez <laughs> can i say no. that yeah no <laughs> could can you edit like the it? tapes edit that part out like <laughs> yes sir so so the bats and stuff that came out of the baseball softball program Right from the community. I thought that they were donating that stuff to that inner city league, our old stuff always. I they may very well be. I don't think we ever sold any of the stuff that came out of that program. I thought we always donated it. was always that. donated. You know, I, I was speaking globally about how we handle things in general. I, I've just never seen it on the list before. It's always gotten. It, it, if we're getting rid of Park District property, it technically should be on the list, so we're just refining our practices. Okay, but we haven't changed our policy. We're still doing donations. We will sports donate sports equipment, sports equipment to... as we have been. All right. But the appropriate thing to do is to declare it surplus first. Do, but Mike, are there any local groups that would be interested in that sports equipment? I have no idea. I mean, we 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 could, you know, we we have a, a dedicated uh, direction to to put baseball and softball equipment that have that has been vetted by the board of control and the athletic department, and I, I just soon continue to respect their wishes on where it goes. I've been doing it for thirty years. Yeah, Ron Ellenbos has a great job in that. Yeah. I'm just thinking, though, if there were kids in Wheaton that would use it, I'd just as soon see us give it to them. Um, yeah. I, you know if what? I, I, serve at, I serve at the, the, the will of the board. If the, if the, the majority of the board wants me to program, give it to somebody program, else, we'll program, give it to somebody else. Don't start micromanaging. They can, they can, not, look, uh, they can look at it. Well, that, yeah. if we come down and we start telling them. <laughs> I know. I'm being I'm being lectured here about micromanagement. So. <laughs> I'm moving away. Uh, so we would not appreciate the part of the board. They're not doing the commissioner fee. I want to tell you the baseball. Well, for the record, I meant to uh, purchase. I was just asking. I just ask a question about all the kids in Wheaton being served. So that's all. Okay. So we have a motion by Fry, second by Morrill. Um, Mike, would you call the roll? Uh, I'm going to just go with uh, Commissioner Hodgkinson. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Fryer. Yes. Commissioner Fahey. Yes. Commissioner Morrill. Yes. Commissioner Me. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. President Byers. Yes. Thank you. Okay, item 11, none too soon. <laughs> ordinance 2017-07. Does somebody have a motion ready? Move to approve the general use ordinance for the regulation of park district property. Second. Motion by me, second by Fahey. Any discussion? I would uh, like to extend my gratitude to uh, uh, Rob Spurl and the Commissioner Terry Mee for the work they did in assisting uh, Donna and I in, uh, in updating our <laughs> park use ordinance and general uh, rules for park conduct. It uh, wasn't an easy task. I also want to recognize 
uh, Commissioner Hodgkinson and <coughs> former Commissioner Vandershaft, who also uh, took a run at it several years ago uh, when we uh, needed to table it for another year or two, and here we are today. So thank you all for the work. It's an, an important document. Uh, the police have been waiting patiently for updated fines for uh, bad behavior in the parks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. Thank you, Commissioner Me. Commissioner oh, Me wants welcome, everybody behaving President well in the virus. parks. Behave yourself. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to reports from staff, executive director. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I probably have to run that through a vote. Yes, don't I? yes, we should. Be. <laughs> we have a motion by me and a second by Fahey. Uh, would you call the roll, Mike? Commissioner Fry. Yes. Commissioner Fahey. Yes. Commissioner Morrill. Yes. Commissioner Me. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Hodgkinson. Yes. President Virus. Yes. Thank you. Okay, and uh, reports from staff, executive director report, Mike. I have nothing further. Oh, bless you. Um, how about uh, the uh, finance and special facilities and other uh, department reports? Does anybody have any comments? Ray. Yeah, I, I have a couple comments on, on the pool report as well as the, the other report. Uh, but congratulations to the museum for receiving three awards from the Illinois Association of Museums uh, for its 50th birthday uh, from flame to fluorescent program and the roof replacement project. And I would like to welcome Max, and I'm not gonna pronounce your last name, but Max is our new uh, aquatics, uh, full-time, uh, whatever your title is, director of aquatics and, and risk management. Uh, so con congratulations and welcome to the welcome. district. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the cold weather. Yeah. Um, yes. How's it going? Go in the pool one off. real quick. Anybody else on the department reports? Oh, so you still going, Ray? Are you done? He wants to I'm go. Done, to I'm done with that, but I have pool report comments. So yeah, I'll come back to you then. Back there, there you go. Anything on the department? Yeah, just real quickly, um, uh, Andy. Uh, thanks for keeping pace on the golf rounds. Are about the same as they were last year. Uh, we're doing good there. Uh, shout out to the museum. We had about a thousand more visitors thus far in 2017 than we did at this point in time in 2016. Not bad. Um, the, I also want to, uh, Mary Beth, is this year people, baseball and softball in the process of revamping signage at all of the fields and parks? Good work. Now, is, has that been started yet or is it We're all working finished? We're with the marketing department and we'll be working with this guy right here. That guy? Cool. Uh, well, <coughs> I, I think it's, you know, it's commendable and, uh, you know, additional signage is going to help. Thanks. Comments on the departmental reports about the aquatics report. Ray. 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 Aquatics, Ray. <laughs> I'll make it quick. Uh, I no. just I just like the comment that the Wheaton residents uh, accounted for 92 percent of our aquatic staff, which results in about 400, a little over 403, almost 404 thousand dollars. That really goes back to the community and wages to our Wheaton residents. And most of those individuals are high school, college age kids. So we're, we're a great uh, employer for young people. Uh, and we should be proud of that. Um, notice our revenues are up and our expenses are down, which is a, a good trend. And, but looking at where we have decreased in revenue uh, this year versus prior years, we need to take a look at where we've decreased and see what we can do to turn that around as well. We've decreased in daily admission, we've decreased in guest passes, and we've decreased revenue in uh, facility rentals. And those are areas that uh, obviously you need to, to address. Uh, one of the, the comments in the survey I noticed, and it comes up every time we do the survey, is people think our fees are too high uh, for pool passes, and yet the Wheaton Park District is subsidizing both these pools at a, at a cost of over $146,000. So we're, I want to say, losing money. It's costing us to run these pools. And even though our fees may appear to be high, uh, they truly, uh, if we were to run this as a business, they should be higher. Our goal is to get more people to the pools so that we can keep the fees where they're at and, and provide a great service to the community. Um, the, 
I think there needs to be a sign for Rice Pool and Water Park where uh, the uh, old rec office used to be. Uh, you can't tell that Rice Pool and Water Park really exists unless you see it in a brochure or in some kind of advertisement because the sign that's up by the community center is pretty much hidden by the plants that have grown up around it and it's really not very visible. Um, one of the things that, and, and I attended the uh, school district's meeting, uh, was it last Thursday? Uh, and one of the things that they had said was that uh, they had 600 new kids in the school district, uh, new kids. And so that's telling me that we are getting an increase in population of, of younger families who have children. But they also indicated that 27% of the kids in the school district are on uh, aid. Subsidized lunch. Some kind of subsidized uh, program, which tells me that there, there are more kids in our school system, more families who might partake in park district programs, facilities, and services, and yet more people who can't afford uh, to pay the price. And so... It's a tricky balance that we need to make, recognizing that there are people out there who need our, our services, who can't afford to pay for it, and yet we need to be creative in trying to figure out how can we provide that service for them or get them to, to the service, however, however means we might do that. Sponsorships, donations, whatever. So those are my comments. Thank you very much. Terry. Wendy, you're here. I want to commend you for a great career, and uh, congrats <laughs> on uh, your upcoming retirement. <laughs> and I'll credit you with, you know, the increased revenues, you know, gross and net, you know, for the pools and the concessions. You know, the attendance is up. I know Mother Nature helped us a little bit, but, you know, um, it shows that our pools, as Ray oh. said, have been used, you know. So our uh, with our attendance up and, and our... You know, financials up, you know, uh, kudos to you. You deserve it. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank you Wendy. Thank you. John, Kelly, anything? Jane? Yeah, Wendy, I wanted to congratulate you again uh, and thank you and let you know that, it, you know, it has been really wonderful having you as our aquatic director for this very long time period here in Wheaton and we've all benefited, those of us who've had kids that have been, <coughs> been involved with, with swim lessons um, I read I read this summer in the Tribune that something like 51% of the United States population never <coughs> learned how to swim. And I think that that is something that, of all governmental entities, park districts should definitely be involved with. And I understand that sometimes we lose money on swimming pools, but I am still going to say that Wendy has been working really hard, and all of us should be working really hard to figure out how every kid and adult in Wheaton could learn how to swim. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of disheartened that they're opening swimming pools up in shopping centers around here, and that our enrollment goes down in some things. So I think uh, it, you've done a wonderful job, and now you are going to take over. It's a challenge that all of us, I think, need to rise and, and take. So, Wendy, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Wendy, congratulations. Thank you. On your retirement, and uh, thank you for the very thorough, detailed report. Um, some of my comments um, that I had uh, wanted to say, uh, Ray had brought those up. Um, but congratulations on the three exceeds, the uh, uh, receiving the gold standard for the audits. So um, that's excellent. Um, one thing that, um, uh, and congratulations for the, uh, the, the decrease in spending on the uh, contractual supplies, the operational supplies decreased, park operations decreased, and training expenses decreased. So that's a great trend. Um, one thing that stuck out to me is, um, so in that, that survey from, uh, the community, um, we had just about five stars out of the five is the top, um, excellent one being, um, poor, very poor. 
Um, pool, f everything was uh, uh, just about five, 4.8 to 4.9, except our pool fees. So somehow they think that we're not spending enough, you, you know, that we're too much money. <coughs> but then uh, uh, when it said uh, recommendations, what they liked or what changes, so maybe we can address this as a board too, is uh, rice pool, um, uh, more available shade, um, makeover uh, of the facility, and I know we're talking about that. Um, shade over long chairs or the lounge chairs. So, um, so it seems like they're. Um, I don't know if that will help uh, the attendance if some of these things that they uh, would like to see changes in is that is that stopping them from coming to the pool, um, or uh, so. Those are uh, um, things that I just wanted to comment on. And also, uh, yeah, Black Friday. How many um, in the report? I think um, it said sixty percent of our sales is um, is discounted. Right. Okay. Um, that Black Friday. What is the pu purpose for that? Um, I mean, are we are we uh, capturing more people? We feel we that? do. Um, yeah. It's the jump start to get into the next season, and by giving them that 25% discount, uh, <coughs> we can get them to buy the pool passes, maybe give them as Christmas gifts, that kind of thing, and get that, that start going. And um, rather than we used to have like a preseason, and then you jumped right into your seasonal. And this way, we feel that um, it's getting more people interested and in, interested. In, coming out and buying their passes earlier than waiting till the end when they have to pay the full price. Okay. But if we're still going to capture these people, do you think uh, possibly, I mean, 25% discount, um, I mean, that could, that could help um, keeping our revenues uh, up a little bit. So I don't know if that's something to look at, um, but those are my Certainly comments. Well. Okay. Well. Any other comments from the commissioners? Any other items? Just one question to staff. How did we do with the light the torch run? Did we get a lot, have a lot of runners? It was at 900 and how does that compare to last year? Um, it was up about Great. Last year more Christine, Christine, what was that number? 907 runners. 907. An increase of several hundred I just uh, did you want to, to, to say something? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank all of you um, for the experience and the opportunities that you have given me over the last 30 years. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I will walk away with a lot of great memories and uh, still have that passion for swimming. So thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Wendy. Thank I just have a couple comments on a, uh, some upcoming events. Uh, this Saturday at the Historical Museum, 50th anniversary of the museum, it's golden birthday. Uh, you, we are having an event, starts at 12 o'clock. Uh, there's a presentation and cake cutting at one, a band, the Sons of the New Amish. Bernard, are you vouching for these guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, games, train display, light refreshments, all are invited again this Saturday. Uh, the October 21st from 12 to 4 p.m. And then we uh, spent some money to refurbish the obelisk at uh, Northside Park commemorating uh, Wheaton's uh, veterans of World War I. Uh, we were lu lucky or honored to receive a grant from the Pritzker, Pritzker. Military Museum. Um, and we're having a rededication ceremony at that obelisk on Saturday, November 11th on Armistice Day uh, at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, right? 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So all are invited to that as well. That'll be a pretty great event. Um, so that being said, uh, does somebody have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Motion by second. Moral second by Fahey. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.